Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here taking a look at Another World 20th Anniversary Edition. Although to be fair, it's actually 23 years. This game originally came out in 1991, so... Yeah. It's around this point I say how long I've been playing the game for. I can tell you exactly. 2 hours and 16 minutes. Why can I tell you exactly? Because I have all the trophies and some sites tell you how long it took you to get there. I have completed this game through and through. <laughs> And again, it only took me two hours. That was a little bit surprising. I honestly thought another world actually went for that long, but now apparently you can finish this game completely in like 20 minutes if you know what you're doing. That is, the that is to say that the game really isn't that short. It's more like a, um, how do I put this? It's got a fair few hours in it purely by the idea of replayability. I eventually looked up a guide and by replayability, I mean how long it takes you to finish the game normally. I originally looked up a guide to get through some of it because one of the puzzles at the very end is a bastard because it doesn't give you any clear signal on how to actually finish it. The rest to do, there's this one that doesn't. So I've got to be careful, since I actually know the entire game, considering I only played it a couple of hours ago, I've got to be careful not to actually play through it all in one go. So let's get, jump straight to Arrival, shall we? A nice little touch is that in the options menu, you can actually swap your graphical style from a classic version to a new version. You can see me swapping it back and forth right now. I really like the new version because it really doesn't take away from the art style they were going for with the old version. But it also conveys more detail and, nice, and m nicer detail in general. It doesn't take away from the spirit of the original game, which I really like. So, in this game, everything's out to kill you. Yeah. And most of the game's action sequences, I guess I'll call them action sequences, is trying to avoid these things in any way possible. Like, for example, doing that. Occasionally, you'll come across things like this, which will send you right back the way you came. And what I'm going. The main time spent replaying this game is replaying the action sequences because this game handles like a game from 1991, right? The controls are a bit iffy and it's really hard to tell exactly where you're going to actually land after you jump. And in order to actually jump, to do a good forward jump, you actually have to sprint and it's kind of hard to tell. That is a really scary sound. It is kind of hard to tell when you're going to... when you need to jump in order to figure this out. It's, it's annoying. And you may spend a few tries simply retrying the same thing over and over again. And sometimes when you're... Sometimes when you're playing this, you'll go what appears to be a few sections forward, but then you'll keep getting thrown back. It's kind of hard to figure out why you get thrown back so far a lot of the time. There is a reason for it, though. I have actually figured this out. It's mainly because you... You miss something. If you keep getting thrown back what feels like really far, like more than one action sequence, you've probably gone and missed something. So you probably just want to be... You just you probably just want to go back and god damn it. You probably just want to go back and make sure that you didn't actually miss anything. And as you can see here... I've been thrown back to the start of this action sequence, and I'm not going to play that again, so we'll just skip to the next sequence. This game does let you skip back and forth, but to be fair, this game isn't very replayable. It's a one-trick pony sort of thing. There are some hidden trophies to go for, but some of them... Some of them are easy, some of them you'll need a guide for. Like, there was this one trophy called Cowboy, where... You can only achieve it by coming in a room from a certain way, which is really not the way you're expecting... You need to go in. It's kind of annoying. There's also a couple of hidden trophies. Some of which you'll get really easily for some reason. And some of which will just... Yeah. Oh, um, by the way, if you're in the... If you're in the... Classic gameplay mode, the frame rate will actually slow down. But if you put it on the... On the newer graphics... It'll be a very smooth game. I don't know what the deal is with that. I wonder why they couldn't make the old stuff smoother. Whoops. Oh, I have to go through this shit again. 
this is a game about retrying and retrying a lot to figure out what you need to do. I'm going to do you a favor and save you the idea of a... And save you the time trying to figure out what you need to do in one specific area of the game. When you come to the top of the stairs and find a guy who rolls grenades down the stairs, let him roll four down the stairs. Trust me, that'll open up the next area. Now, throughout the game, you also get this gun. This gun is a very interesting... Ow. Screw it. We'll skip to the next bit. I'm not one to waste your time. So, throughout the game, you'll get this gun, right? This gun can actually do several things. One of the things it can do is obviously shoot, but if you hold it in for just long enough, it'll put out a shield. Hold it down for even longer, and you'll get a what, what's a, basically a super laser beam, which will actually break most shields. So it adds to a sort of combat system. It, it's, it's, a, it's a fun little combat system to play, but it's, it's annoying because you kind of have to just retry to figure out the exact right path to actually get that, get any of this shit done. Like, there's this one area where you get ambushed by two guys coming from either side, and it's like, oh god. And you have to be planting shields down before you know they're coming, and there's a bunch of things like that that happen. Where you don't know what's coming, but you kind of have to... But you kind of have... Yeah, you have to be ready for it anyway. There's a couple of other things too, like... The game does actually keep you on the straight and narrow, though. There's no way to outright fail this game entirely. So, you can't get yourself killed by forgetting an item, which Delphine Software are actually fairly known for. There was also some stuff along the lines of, um... Oh, well, there's not really that much else to talk about, really. It's, it, again, it just takes a while. There are some puzzles that aren't immediately obvious. Sometimes you have to do stuff that you're really not expecting to need to do. Was it, was it here? Yeah, it was. Sometimes you have to do stuff you weren't exactly expecting you'd need to do in order to finish the puzzles. It's a little bit odd, and thankfully the game's not that egregious. It's mainly... Oh yeah, I gotta run from this, don't I? It's usually not that egregious. Again, other than that one area with the grenade grenadier, I probably could have figured out this game by myself. But... It's relatively unnecessary. And you do get unlimited lives and all that, and it's a... It's a cute little story about you and your new alien friend trying to escape from this alien planet. It's a... whoops. It is a bit of a dull ending though, but... It's an alright story, it's an alright journey. I wish some sequences were slightly easier, or at least if there was a little bit more signalling to how the checkpoints work originally. Because I have a lot of trouble trying to remember where the checkpoints are and all that. But, it, as I said before, it is a fun journey. I wish it was a little bit easier, but then again, if it was easier, it would probably be even less playtime. And it looks great, and it sounds great. There is an option to actually use both remastered sound, the original sound, and the original sound with the CD audio, which I find to be a bit odd. You don't usually hear that these days, do you? CD audio. This is a fun game, though. I will admit that. It is a fun, fun little game. It's very pretty. Like, look at that background art. It, it, this game is very, very pretty. Oh, God. I'm dead. <laughs> it's kind of gory, too, now that, now that you think about it. But there's a fair few puzzles, and again... Considering I went for a guide and got two hours, if you're willing to abstain from using a guide, you will probably get a few more hours out of it. But then again, if you've played another world before, they haven't added anything new. It's just a bunch of, um... What's the word I'm looking for? It's just the same stuff that was in there before. So you've really got no problem in skipping this if you don't really want to play another world again. I'm going to need to go in there eventually, but not right now. So that was a look at another world. It's a very pretty, very great sounding, 
kind of hard, kind of antiquated game. It's a very well done remaster. Uh, there's not that many problems with the port, other than stuff that might be blamed on the fact that it's just a 1991 remaster anyways, so... Bollocks. So, but, you know, if, it, if it's, it's a game from 1991. To be fair, you couldn't expect much better. The new remaster looks great. Sounds great too, have a listen. There are some other really good soundtracks in here as well. I can see this, why this game was called a classic back in... Jesus Christ. I can see why this game was called a classic back in 1991. In 2014, it is a bit, as I said before, it's a bit antiquated. But, I don't have a problem with his, with his existence. They've done the port well enough to make me say, you know, if, you, if you're ever curious and you want to spend a few hours in 90s puzzle game heaven, I can't really say anything against this. Jesus. I can't really say anything against Another World 20th Anniversary Edition. And the cool thing is, right now it's actually $8. It'll go up to 10 after the launch week discount. But for a few hours of puzzling, $8 would be great. You might get a little bit frustrated with the controls. Sometimes they take a bit to get around. There are very frequent checkpoints. But, again, if you miss something important, you might be stuck wondering, Alright, what the hell am I doing wrong, wrong right now? I'll go do one more scene and then we'll call it. Alright, we'll go from here. We'll show off the... This is like where I spent half my game time because, as I said before, I got stuck on figuring out where the checkpoints were, so I ended up playing this this one scene over and over again, so we'll see if I can pull it off first try. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. Nope, I missed. Find a little picture there. We'll give it one more try. Unfortunately, I did just play through like half the game, so bollocks. One more. I did just kind of play through like half the game on camera, so you know. Oh, I missed it again. <laughs> I have- I'm t terrible with my timing, but anyway, one- that was enough. That was a look at another world! It's pretty good. There are a couple of bullshit puzzle solutions, and the controls are a little bit antiquated, and sometimes you feel like you're fighting them as much as you're fighting the actual game enemies, but... Once you figure it out, it's a good little journey. Go- it's a little bit short, and... Eight bucks might be the maximum you want to pay for this, but... It's still enjoyable nonetheless, and it's really nice to look at as well. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.